RS Pack 1.0 just dropped, and I'll be honest, I'm not dressed properly for the occasion. So I need you guys to give me a second. Much better. Got my RS Build shirt on for the occasion. It's a bit big for me, but I'm still very thankful to Zach, who, if you don't know him, is the guy making all of this happen, moved from working at Lululemon over to ByteDance and TikTok so he could push bundlers forward way further than they've ever gone. He wanted to work on giant code bases that needed the help. And he absolutely does. And we met at Render, and he gave me the box that has the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Zach's great. Definitely give him a follow. One of the legends actually working to make the infrastructure we use as developers better every day. Let's hop in. See my little crab peeking out there. I love that. RS Pack 1.0 Alpha. The RS Pack 1.0 is now available on NPM. Before releasing the stable version, we want to do one to two months of testing to improve the API stability and reliability of the version 1.0 release and to verify its impact on downstream projects. RS Pack 1.0 stable version is expected to be released this August. A significant milestone as it means that RS Pack has implemented the major features and APIs of Webpack. Yes, this is a Rust rewrite of Webpack. Which might sound familiar. Sure, those of y'all who are deep enough in either the Next ecosystem or my channel are familiar with TurboPack. TurboPack is being worked on by Vercel in the original creator of Webpack to try and remake Webpack in Rust so it doesn't suck as much and it's not as absurdly slow. The speed that they've been aiming for with this is insane. Yeah, Tobias, the creator of Webpack, as he said, it's time for a new beginning in compiler infrastructure for the entire web ecosystem. Yeah, it's time. I agree. That said, it has been time for a while, and TurboPack was promised a long time ago and is still nowhere near 1.0. It somewhat recently became an option to use in dev for Next.js, but we should have been using it in prod for many more projects two plus years ago. And as excited as I am about what Vercel is doing here, it's just not moving fast enough. And I'm honestly excited to see an alternative Rust-based Webpack project that is actually close to shipping. It is being used by many companies to ship their production bundles today. Because TurboPack might work for dev soon, but it's not gonna be production ready for way longer. And RS Pack is gonna be there in August. So what do we actually have here to care about? First off, they finally enabled concatenating of modules by default during production builds, which means that hold the modules that your NPM installing in your project will be bundled into a single vendor module kind of expected with these things, but it's nice that like they actually have production building here. Apparently it's to merge multiple modules into a single function, thereby reducing the overhead associated with parsing and executing JS code in the browser. Nice. This also will reduce the size between four and 10% of the code you're shipping. Good stuff. They added lightning support. You're not familiar with lightning CSS. It is a phenomenal CSS ecosystem. It's the CSS bundler that introduces and implements all of the features that we expect from modern CSS things, like some of the crazy template stuff that people like to use, all the SAS and less and things associated with those. And it's also becoming the starting point for projects like Tailwind. And Tailwind v4 will be built entirely around Lightning CSS, which is awesome because Lightning CSS is also built in Rust. So it's really, really fast. We're getting to the point where a lot of our web tools are ready and working in production and are built in Rust, which means our dev ecosystem is going to be way faster to work in. And it's actually kind of funny that our compilers are going to be faster than the Rust compiler. And we're using Rust to get there because Rust is very, very slow for compilations. But after years of effort, we're finally catching up to where we were with ES build written in Go by one dude four years ago. That aside, we're getting there and I'm really hyped to see it. So having lightning support is dope. A lean core. To ensure the long-term stability of RS Pack V1, we've removed some non-core features that were built into the RS Pack core before. This allows the core to be lean and focus on providing common bundler features. Apparently they had SWC built in before for emotion style components in Relay because they didn't have a way to do it with their bundler, but they've removed it since. You can still use it via an experimental plugin. You'll notice like in other new bundlers, you're never gonna hear them mention things like styled components or relay or an old animation solution or style component solution like emotion. These things aren't relevant to the people who are excitedly adopting all the new things because that's not what RS Pack is for. It might be like, oh my God, another bundler. And like, to be fair, I tweeted earlier that I think I have bundler fatigue because there's just so many now. I just heard about Farm today too, which I did not know about. An extremely fast web build tool written in Rust. Apparently it's even faster than RS Pack. But when we're already going from seven seconds to 600 milliseconds, I don't care about an additional improvement, honestly. Like I'm happy. Once we're under a second, I care so much less. That all said, 
it seems like the goal of RS Pack isn't to be another faster bundler. It's to be a well-supported bundler that works with old and new projects and can be used alongside things like module federation for big code bases full of new and old code and hundreds of developers contributing. And that's what I've seen from the team so far. RS Pack was initially created to solve performance problems encountered at ByteDance. If you're not familiar, ByteDance makes TikTok. They have a massive code base, many massive teams, and they wanted to make sure that their giant apps could actually build well. Previously, one of the core contributors to RSPAC, the guy who does a lot of the marketing and stuff, Zach, worked at Lululemon, but he moved to ByteDance so we could focus more on these large scale, complex bundling problems. Production build times had grown to 10 minutes or even half an hour in some cases, and cold start times could exceed several minutes. I even had this on Twitch and our single giant code base for the website. After experimenting with many bundlers and optimization ideas, a common set of requirements emerged. First, they needed to get the dev mode startup performance to be great. NPM run dev is a command that developers may invoke many times per hour. Engineering productivity suffers if startup times exceed 10 to 15 seconds. They also need fast builds. NPM run build is used in their continuous integration and deployment pipelines, and it directly impacts merging productivity and application delivery times. This is a really underrated thing with build times. If you deploy a change and it's broken, if you have a system where you can roll back to the old version, you don't have to build it again, awesome, good for you. Many people don't. And if you don't, when you roll back to the old version, it's often by reverting a PR, and now you have to rebuild the new state. And if that takes 30 plus minutes, that's 30 plus minutes that your site is broken then and shouldn't have been. These things are alarmingly common, and as silly as it is, just cutting your deployment times down to be one to two minutes means that whole discipline of keeping build artifacts around matters significantly less because you can just recreate the artifact once you make the change to the code base. This is so essential to doing things like quick bug fixes, which is something that's really important to me. If a user reports a bug, it takes me 20 minutes to fix, but then it takes 20 to 50 minutes to actually build and ship, that sucks. If it takes a minute, then that user ends up having a better experience. I feel much prouder of my work, and that whole that whole flywheel just goes much better. And as they said here, those large apps that like Zach was talking about, took 20 to 30 minutes to run in these pipelines and the bundling times often a major contributor. They also wanna make sure they had flexible configuration. From experimenting with various popular bundlers, we found that a one size fits all configuration encountered many problems when trying to accommodate for real world projects. I also add to this existing real world projects because if you have a giant old webpack build and you wanna use something new, good luck, have fun. A major advantage of Webpack was its flexibility and its ease of accommodating customized requirements for each project. This is also kind of its downfall because any two Webpack-based projects are going to have a very different time trying to move off it. And this in turn may pose steep migration costs for legacy projects that are trying to migrate away from Webpack. Absolutely cool. He actually points that out there. If you're trying to move off Webpack, you're up until now at least kind of fucked. That's why TurboPack was started. It's also why RS Pack was started. One more point they call out here is the production optimization capabilities. All of the existing bundling solutions also had various limitations when optimizing for a production environment, such as insufficiently fine-grained package splitting, etc. God, who in chat has had to do their own bundle splitting? Who's ever spent the time defining chunks by hand in the Webpack config? Because I did, and it sucked. It sucked really hard and I haven't recovered yet still. Yeah, I see ones in chat if you've had to do custom bundle splitting in your Webpack config before. Not as many as I was expecting. I'm relieved because it's a miserable thing. And for those who have had to deal with it, I am so sorry. When does that become needed? It becomes needed when you have a website that has a lot of different routes that have a lot of different JavaScript. And you don't want to load all of the JavaScript on every page. So if we didn't have good bundle splitting on Twitch, you'd have to load like 300 megs probably of JS, like unironically. But every route has its own subset of the JS that is bundled for it through the custom bundle splitting that we would set up. Rich Harris has made a bunch of tools for this, thankfully, and a dgit for grabbing stuff from subdirectories can work. But honestly, I found Vite and other modern tools do a good enough job of doing that for you that most modern devs have never had to worry about it. But God, if you were in the OG Webpack days on a big project, dealing with that stuff was so miserable. RS Pack was an opportunity to rethink these optimizations from the ground up, leveraging Rust-specific features such as multi-threading. Because threading in Rust is famous for being so easy, right? <laughs> Why is there no like low level language that has good threading characteristics? Like the channel axioms in Go are shit. Rust's like colored functions and the way you deal with async in it is so miserable that like Tokyo has become a meme. It's Tokyo is good, but the fact that like it's necessary says so much. To be fair, we have effect in TypeScript. So same difference, but like the lack of good threading behaviors in these low level languages is kind of terrifying. And Elixir and I guess Gleam and other things built on Erlang are the only things that have good behaviors there. 
the current state of RSPAC. RSPAC has been under continuous development since April of 2022, and it was launched as open source back in March of 2023. RSPAC has finished implementing most important features of Webpack, and these features can meet the needs of most projects. Some ByteDance internal projects have already achieved a five to 10 times improvement moving from Webpack to RSPAC, and there's still room for future optimizations. This is the big thing though. RSPAC is compatible with Webpack's configuration schema and its loader architecture. So you can still use things like Babel loader, less loader, SAS loader, view loader, et cetera. This is massive. This means that RSPAC can still use these old legacy loaders built in JavaScript for the things that you don't want to move yet. If you have code that relies on specific quirks in Babel loader, or you're insisting on continuing to use less without moving over to something like Lightning that we mentioned before, you can just use the old things, which is huge. Currently, RSPAC's cache support is relatively simple and only supports memory level caching. In the future, they plan to bring stronger caching capabilities. Really exciting stuff. And their future goals are really exciting as well. They want to collaborate with community partners, which is great. They don't want this to just be a ByteDance thing. And it's honestly never felt like it. I did not expect to see ByteDance mentioned in this because it really isn't that tightly tied. And it seems like Zach and crew's goals are quite noble here. They want to enhance the plugin capabilities as well, obviously, because Webpack loaders are a bit rough and they want to make that something better. But I'm happy they're waiting to do this later because they were focused on compatibility first. There's also the goal to continue to improve performance, obviously. The test suite will just skip that. So how do we compare with Webpack? The big differences that matter are that Webpack's in JavaScript. This is in Rust. So we have the efficiency of Rust. We have a highly parallelized architecture. We have built-in implementations for essential bundling features. We have optimized HMR as well. This is a big one. Webpack had no real concept of HMR and people would build their own crazy things on top. This is just built in now. It's great. I like that they're not going to pretend that Vite and ES building these things don't exist. A lot of people, when they're going after something that's old like Webpack, will just ignore the other stuff in the space. They're doing the opposite. They're calling these all out here. They point out that Vite offers a great dev experience, but since it still relies on Rollup, which is an early Webpack alternative built by Rich Harris, still in JavaScript, it's still much better. It doesn't have anywhere near as much config and it's way easier to set up and use well. It also does really good built-in bundle splitting and stuff like that, but it's still slower. It's still JavaScript. <laughs> And as such, the same trade-offs of Webpack versus Rollup apply here. For example, the flexibility of the optimization.split chunks feature. I had so many problems trying to do manual chunk splitting in V. To be fair, I shouldn't have tried. That was my mistake. But that was one of the weirdest experiences I had trying to manually split chunks in Rollup in V. How do we compare to ES Build though? ES Build achieves very good performance by implementing nearly all operations in Golang, except for a few JavaScript plugins. However, ES Build's feature set is not as complete as Webpack. For example, with respect to JS hot module replacement and incremental compilation, as well as the split chunk stuff that we were talking about before. Yeah, ES Build's goal was to turn TypeScript files and modules and all of those things into smaller JavaScript files really quickly because Evan Wallace, the guy who was the CTO of Figma, wanted things to be faster. He did a great job. The fact that he built ES Build as quickly as he did and we're still trying as an industry to catch up to it says so, so, so much. But at least we're making progress here. And what's cool with RS Pack is it's getting similar performance while also having all of the features that we would expect from the Webpack ecosystem, better incremental compilation, and things like that. How about TurboPack? <laughs> TurboPack is implemented in Rust like RSPack, but it also started over with a redesigned architecture and configuration. It brings some benefits, but it also presents a steeper migration cost for projects that rely on Webpack and its extensive ecosystem. It also doesn't work yet. And it was nice of them to not mention that part here, but yeah. As mentioned before, Rollup is still not very fast because it's JS based. They didn't put Roll Down in here, which if you're not familiar, Roll Down is the attempt by the Vue and specifically the Vite community to rewrite Rollup in Rust. The same way that TurboPack and RSPack are rewriting Webpack in Rust, Roll Down is rewriting Rollup in Rust. See why I have bundler fatigue? There's a lot going on here and it's not getting easier. Well, let's try spinning something up using RSPack. I'm actually curious. PM, PM, create RS build at latest. RS build test. Look at all these options. I love this too. Biome is the initial recommendation. If you don't know Biome, it was an attempt to rewrite ESLint and Prettier as a single all-in-one solution, also in Rust. It was originally Rome, but that company failed and the open source fork, so it was always open source. Some of the original contributors, when it failed, went and focused on this open source fork called Biome that's actually improving way faster than Rome ever did. PMPM install. The one catch here that's important to note, you might have noticed how much slower those downloads are. Since all of these things are now using Rust, they're all shipping binaries. So instead of shipping 
a couple of kilobytes to a megabyte or two of JS, they're shipping like 20 megabyte binaries. This is really funny because people are going to start complaining about the size of their node modules growing massively. And it's because JavaScript is so terrible. It's actually because we're stuffing other languages binaries into our code bases now. But that's an aside, a thing that we can make fun of another day. Because what I'm here to do is see what the experience is like working in these files. Don't forget to sub, save. That was instant. That was actually like, like not like close to, that was legitimately instant. So I'm saving right now. Does it show me in the terminal how fast it was? Yeah, 0.02 seconds. I didn't think the difference would be that notable. That's kind of nuts. Okay, you have my attention. I know it's a trivial amount of code that I'm loading, but I wanted to see like how this would feel. If we were to move this to Vite, which I don't feel like doing, I promise you, even though it's still fast, it's quite a bit slower. What I actually do want to see, though, is the production builds, because that's where a lot of these other frameworks fail. Yeah, that's cracked. Like, just do a quick comparison. Uh, PNPM create v at latest. Uh, PNPM install time. PNPM build. Still pretty fast, but in comparison, less than half the time, almost a third. That's insane. And that will scale massively as the code base gets way bigger too. Ooh, this is actually a really good thing. I like they have this. They have migration guides on how to move out of something like create react app to something like RS build. This is a missing piece that a lot of things don't have anymore. Moving to like next from create react app is not easy. There were docs a long time ago, not the case anymore. But when we go to this doc, that's really cool. This is a, like a detailed step-by-step -step of all the things that you should do that's dope. Even if you're not moving to RS build, I'm going to save this resource and potentially link it to people in the future. That is so handy. By the way, RS build is the RS pack powered build tool. You can think of it as like the V to the ES build and roll up. It's the thing that does the actual building using the bundler RS pack. This ecosystem is actually a lot more mature than I expected. This is so cool to see. I'll admit I was a little skeptical going in, but I'm going to give RS build a star as well because this appears to just work. It appears there's a real path out of existing tools. And I'm honestly hyped to see that. This is a code base meant to stress test all these different bundlers to see how fast they can do things. I'm thankful that like this community of people who are really deep in this space understand that we should all be using PNPM. There was a window where a bunch of them were insisting that NPM or Yarn were fine, and they're all over it. I was one of them, to be fair. I was a holdout on NPM, but we're past that now. We're in. We're deep in the world of PNPM. Bun's improving, but I still kind of prefer PNPM just because the lock file is like a much better format. And also, it's a stupid thing, but the lock files in PNPM diff really well. So if multiple people are changing package versions at the same time, the diffs merge well. So let's see how they actually recommend running this. We can run a build with any one of these tools. So we can start with the Vite one, because I'm curious. PNPM run build Vite. I'll throw a time on front. Not bad. All things considered, when you think about how large this code base is, two seconds is not bad. We compare that to Webpack. We might be waiting here for a bit. We get a bunch of warnings. I love the asset size limitations. I get these in a couple of our projects that are on Webpack, mostly the upload thing code base. Funny that these happen everywhere now. But if we compare that to build RS pack, 1.3 seconds. Again, compared to V, which was quite fast here, not quite as big of a difference. Still a difference, but not as big there. I was hoping this code base would be a bit bigger and be a little worse to compile. There's like a decent number of components here. My computer is just too OP. Yeah, the numbers here are much more useful. Webpack's startup is eight seconds. The HMR is 300 milliseconds. The HMR on Webpack is approximately as slow as the entirety of startup for farm. And it's about half the speed of RS pack startup. These differences are nuts. I am a little surprised that HMR from root is so much slower on RS pack than other solutions, but it's still cracked. Like all of these numbers are small enough that I don't care anymore. It does look like farm is winning. And since they had this benchmark for me to quickly grab, they're winning in multiple ways. Now the state of these things is better than it's been ever. I'm still a little burnt out by the number of these solutions. And it feels like we are all rewriting our past in Rust this time, which isn't necessarily the right path forward. But it does seem like we're closer than ever. I never would have guessed TikTok would be the ones to come in and save us from Turbo Pack and Vercel, but here we are. I still am hopeful that Vercel will get things together with Turbo Pack, but if not, there's an actual path forward now for people on these old Webpack code bases. Once again, 
Huge shout out to Zach for building this and for the team working on it with him and for the confidence to come out with yet another bundler. Hopefully this one will stick the landing. And maybe, just maybe, you can finally get me to talk about Module Federation. Until next time, peace.